Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. Here back where I started as a photographer, sitting in the same spot as I shot when I was in junior high school. So I was like 13 or so, and I'm probably getting looked at weird here. But anyway, my dad's reffing, so it's good to be here. I broke out the original camera that I started with, the one I took my first sports pictures with, which is this. It is the Fuji Discovery 2000. No, Fuji Discovery 1000. And this is what I use to start shooting photos. It's a point and shoot, and I had to learn so much to anticipate the action and figure it out. So I had to go get some film. Yeah, that's right, film, Fuji 800. Oh yeah, that stuff smells good. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna focus in on using just this camera to try to get great composition, figure out how to get good shots. Two rolls, I don't know how many I'm gonna shoot, but I wanna relive the way that I started shooting photos back when I was 13, right here in this exact spot many, many years ago. So what's interesting with film is I have to figure out how to load this camera and it's been a while. Uh, I remember that it had all this Fuji 800. I used this stuff forever. Oh, these are only 24 rolls. He didn't even have 36s, so I think it, how's this work? Oh, that's right, it goes like this, and then like this, so it auto feeds it. Let's see, did it load it? It did, yeah, it's counting it down. So it counts the number of frames, and then it's gonna start back. I think you count down. So it gets a 24, and then what's gonna happen? Well, it gets a 25 shot, so it gives me up 24 shots. So I'm gonna sit here, I'm, I guess I'm gonna pop the flash off, which means I've got to uh, anticipate what's gonna happen. So here's my zoom, boom, boom. So I go from 35 millimeters out to 70. No, 80, 80. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get this right. Oh, what's interesting is you have to have, press the button halfway down to anticipate what's gonna happen. So this is pretty interesting. All right, so I'm gonna try to get some of this here. Such a small viewfinder. Oh my God, this is impossible. I can't even see through this. Oh, I was ready for that. already. Oh man. Ooh, this is fun. This is fun. This is just like I used to do. I anticipate what's going on and then pop that little flash off. I'm using the flash because I don't think I'll get yelled at. I actually asked my dad if it was all right so they don't yell at me for using the flash and uh, it's pretty crazy to, to try to do this. I'm fighting with the camera. I'm like shoot the picture already and it doesn't do it but we'll figure it out. Oh man, it's so reminiscent of what I used to do. I remember that exact shot when I first started. I hope I don't get yelled at for, you, yelled at for using the flash, I really don't. And what's crazy is I have to go process these, so I don't even know what I'm getting. Should probably some horizontals too. Oh yeah, and also it's not through the lens. You know how we have SLR, so it's through the lens. What you see is what you get. In this case, I'm seeing through here, this little thing, and I'm not getting the exact stuff I want. Yes, Dad? What was that? <laughs> it's crazy using this thing again, Dad. And you gotta be quick with the zoom. It's insane, because zoom isn't exactly fast. Oh, that's a bad picture. That's gonna be a bad picture. I didn't want to take it. Ah. Good try for some horizontals. I don't know, did that, that took a picture. Maybe I should put flash on auto. I think I put flash on auto now, so it's automatically gonna go. Actually, I'm telling it to go. I won't shoot though when the kid's taking, taking foul shots, because that's bad. You don't want to mess them up. Boom. 
We'll see how good this stuff is. I'm gonna zoom in and follow the action. Oh, nice, that was nice. Now I wanna try, I wanna get some good vertical action here. I'm thinking it's gonna come a pass over here to this kid. Boom. I wanted to shoot a picture and it didn't take it. It probably has to do with the flash having the charge up. Let's see, can I get a good shot of the bench here? Oh yeah, I could probably do a good shot of the bench here. Maybe that's what the blinking green light was. I don't even remember. Boom. Oh, there's action and I can't get it. Listen to this, listen to this zoom. You ready? It's like, boom. Down in front, down in front, down in front. <laughs> Boom. Oh, that was a good shot. That was awesome. Yeah, he's upset. He's angry. He's happy or something like that. It was a good shot. I think it was a good shot. I didn't even check to see if I needed to clean this thing. But nope, the lens is pretty good. Maybe I'll take a picture of my dad. Yeah, let me take a picture of my dad. Let's see. There we go. Not much zoom to work with, so you've got to anticipate when that action is going to come up the lane and they're going to turn and you're going to get those cool shots. So it's just a matter of feeling it out. There's no, no better way to shoot than just to try to anticipate the action. That's what I'm doing here. How long does it take to reset? Oh, it takes a while to reset. Turn this way. Boom, with the shot, short. Boom, with another shot, short. Oh, 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 oh. Right there, I saw that right there. He stepped on the line, did you see that? I, I called that. I got it for you. I was just pointing, it was perfect. I think I'm only gonna take one roll because I don't wanna sit through and take another 12. So you gotta, can't forget that you have to, I have to take these and go get processed later. So you're gonna see me at the place where I get them printed. And actually we'll get them processed, we'll get them printed. We'll probably just scan them instead and do that. Good shot, good shot. I'm pretty good. I mean, not really, but yeah, it's true. Not a good pass. Ill advised. And that is the end of the first quarter. So some challenges are just uh, figuring out how to make sure you can shoot. You can't shoot real quick. You can shoot one shot. You anticipate it. You get it. And you've got to move on from there. So that's about it. I'm going to continue shooting on. And I will see you guys over at Newtown Camera, where I will be getting these processed. And we can watch them come out of the machine. So I just rolled into Newtown Camera. My buddy Jim has owned this place. Since when did you open, Jim? Uh, 2001 he opened up before that he was at another store that I used to hang out at like it was cheers I used to just show up as a teenager and hang out and and do all that good stuff just about the time when I was 13 shooting these photos and I discovered that was 
19 years ago when I used to sit there and shoot those basketball games. So what we're doing right now is we're waiting for the film processor machine. For those of you out there who don't know what that is, you take the film from the camera, you put it through this machine and it develops it. So we don't get to see anything until it comes out of this machine. But right now we're waiting for it to like us. It doesn't seem to want to heat up properly. And that seems to be the issue because I don't think they make these anymore. Do they make these anymore? They don't even make them any. Jim says they don't make them anymore. So hopefully, you know, with a, a love tap, a gentle tap, this thing will heat up properly and we can run the film. If not, I'll have to come back when it is working because it can work for three weeks at a time and then sometimes just stop and it starts beeping and that's what's going on. So if it doesn't heat up properly, I won't be running the film today, but if it does, I am going to run the film and look at it as it comes out. Then we will go ahead and scan it into the computer so we can review the images and see what I was able to capture at the basketball game when I was there. So, please work, machine. Gently, nicely, work, or you're gonna get thrown out, and we'll be back. Okay, so I came back and the green light is not on. The green light was on, Jim. Uh-oh. That would be good. It's, We're it's good? Just, it's just bouncing around the temperature. All right. The green light means go. Good. It's on. The green light's on. We're back here today to run this roll of film through it. But I have to rewind it, actually. And there's a button on the bottom to rewind it. I have two shots left. But I might as well just go like this. Take my own picture. Pop the flash on. Let's see. Let's take another one. Wait, wait. Let's see. There. So now it's rewinding, you can hear it rewinding. Yep, film rewinds, 24 shots and we're ready to go. So what we're gonna do is get it ready to go into the machine, attach it there, put it through the machine, and then the fun part is waiting for the prints to come out. It's actually, not the prints, the negatives. It's fun and it's scary at the same time. The reason is, it's good when you see that there's pictures actually on the negatives, that means your exposures were right. Then the other scary part is to know that whether you got them in focus or not. So there's those two things that happen. Film comes out and you go, yes, there's exposures. Then you look closer with a loop or you start to put them into the machine and then you see whether they're good and focused or not. So we're gonna do that. I figured before we run the roll, I should actually show you how we get the roll, the negative out of here and then attach it to the plastic so that it can run through the machine and catch the gears and, and develop. I haven't done this in a while. I actually just got this on the first try and then was like, oh, I should show you this. So this machine here, I don't even know what you call it. Photo systems crown. You take this end of the roll thing, which I'm failing at doing. Ah, there we go. You turn it this way so it gets the uh, negatives ready to come out. This is a tape. Hook the canister right to here. Push the tape into it. I think it connected. Pull back. And I didn't get it. There we go, there we go. Pull out the leader. So this is exposed film already. Put the leader down right here, lock it in. I'm gonna have Jim check everything. And what you do is you chop this off, you chop this off. <laughs> there we go, after three chops. Put this down. No, I've got to tape it to the edge. We good? You're good. Just like the old days? Yeah, you're good. A couple pieces of tape, right? One on each side. That's all you do? That's it. That's all you, you, and you trust that? Yeah, strong tape. Strong tape, all right, then you flip it over, you go like this, do that again. Tape it. So these were scary moments too, because if they, if something ever happened in the machine, you didn't have enough tape and something happened, then you lose all your pictures. So here it is. This is what goes through the machine. Looks good? Looks good. Looks Perfect. good. So we'll see what happens. We'll get this through the machine, but you know, this is how you did it. You had to pull the film out, attach it to this plastic, put it through the machine, this whole process, 10, 15 minutes to wait to see what you got. Not instant like most of you guys are used to right now. So now we're gonna put it in the machine and wait for the pictures to come out. No, wait for the negatives to come out. So we're now ready to put the roll into the machine and then start the waiting process of hoping that the picture's turned out. So here we go. The green light's good, means go, boom, lift it. You guys can see the inside here. So this is a light, tight box. Slide this right into here. How far, Jim? Uh, so it's inside the box. 
So the canisters just hang in there? Yes. All right, and it's gonna hang down like this. It's gonna be on the track. You know, can you just look at this, make sure I didn't screw it up yet? That is perfect. Close the door and it goes? The door, the track, the wheels are gonna make it go. All right. <laughs> so now we've got this going. This is gonna take what, seven, eight minutes? Yes. Seven, eight minutes. We will start to see some negatives coming out this way and I'll be back because that will be exciting. Maybe exciting. Here we go. The plastic part's coming out and attached to that, we're hoping that the negatives are still there. And I'll get to look at this slow process. We'll probably just speed it up so you guys can see me looking at it while it's coming out. And we have pictures, Jim. There's, there's pictures. We have, we have images. There's, there's images that are no longer latent images. They are actual negatives. Oh, those are pictures of me. I look like Santa Claus reversed. Wow, there's basketball pictures. I can't tell if they're underexposed or overexposed. It goes the wrong, the negatives are all backwards. That's why they're negative. So if it's too light, that means it's overexposed, right? Because there was too much light. And if it's too dark, that means it's underexposed and you didn't let in enough light. But being that it was a point and shoot, the camera was doing all the work. So some, some, huh? Should be perfect, yeah. Sometimes there were a flash on, the other times the flash was off. These look awfully light, Jim. Maybe we can correct for that in the, in the computer. I want you guys to remember that back in the day, Somebody had to take your negatives, put it through a machine, and color correct it, do density corrections, do all of these different things that we do in the raw file, but a lot of people forget that. They forget that somebody sat here and made changes and made your negatives that were blah and flat and turned them into punchy, poppy, and depending on where you got it, the right or wrong color. Because some places just got the wrong color down, right Jim? Correct. But there are images here. We used to stand here and do this as they came out of the machine just to see what we would get. I have no idea what's gonna be on these shots, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, they're there, they're there, but I don't know how good they are. They're not very thick negatives. I like thick negatives. Um, come on, come out of the machine. Takes so forever. Oh, those look better. Look at this composition. Even with a point and shoot, I can see that my composition is on. That's really good. That's really good. Done, we're out. So we'll cut this, we're gonna put it into the machine, get some negatives and look at these, get some digital files now. We're not even gonna run prints, there's no reason to run prints. And there you have it, we'll be back in a second. Jim is grabbing the negatives, he's putting it into the Noritsu machine. This is actually a pretty awesome machine down here. Uh, it scans the negatives uh, and then it prints, then it prints them. But we're not gonna print them, we're just gonna scan them and we're gonna uh, put them on a disc so that I can pop them up on the screen. But I wanna look at them as they come up. You're good. So it feeds it. Feeds it right into there. This was an awesome machine. What, what year is this machine? This machine is eight years old now. It's eight years old, that's not even, it's still in the 2000s. Right. <laughs> so it feeds it in, scans it, gives us a nice file. It's a JPEG, right? Yes. You could JPEG do file. TIFFs from there. Do TIFFs as well. But that would just clog, the machine's the slow. Machine still uses chemistry. And it still, yeah, it does use chemistry. Wow, look at that. Wow, wow. <laughs> negatives oh boy so Jim's gonna go through and process not process he's gonna go through and make the corrections you've got your cyan magenta and yellow and density right Correct. so that's brightness and, and darkness oh my god they look so underexposed don't they, they look a little underexposed. that's not my fault right no yeah, that's the point-and-shoot camera in the gymnasium so let's leave me some thickness so I can uh, oh man Oh man, they're bad. No, but they're good, they're not that bad. So, yeah, you can do, we can work with these. Actually, I know what the problem was. It looks like when they're further away, the flash didn't, the flash didn't hit as much. Actually, yeah. some of the pictures, the flash didn't go off. Correct. Because then I had to put it on auto and I didn't realize every time you turn, not, every time you turn off the camera, it reset what the flash was doing. I took a picture of my dad. I see him out there. <laughs> oh boy. So I'll get the files and I'll, I'm gonna tweak them in Lightroom still. Correct. So that's it, There's a, that's it. There's those 20 some shots. They're gonna have the files. We're gonna put them on a disc. It's scanning them right now and we'll come back and I'll show you them on the, in, on the computer in Lightroom. So Jim, thank you very much. You're welcome. Awesome. 
So here we are in the computer, and I have to say this was a heck of a lot of fun grabbing that original camera that I sat with uh, 19 years ago in my junior high school to take basketball photos. I kind of remember them looking better in terms of quality, but I was shooting black and white. Maybe I was shooting 1600 black and white at the time. Who knows? Uh, those pictures turned out pretty well back in the day. I was using, uh, I wasn't using flash, but look at these pictures, guys. I want to honestly say I don't want to hear about noise or grain in your digital files ever again when you're shooting at 1600 or 3200 or 6400 when this is 800 speed and what happens when it's underexposed is this is what you get sure we went ahead and scanned it but all of this noise all of this grain this is film grain this is what it looked like now, I don't have a problem with it I mean this is a little over the top uh, but really no more complaining about noise or grain or anything because this is what we used to deal with. So that's why you kind of, yeah, new stuff isn't a big deal. So action pictures, bad shot, a little too late on the uh, shooting. This is right at the right time that I was going for. And you can't motor drive. It's one picture. You got to wait for it to cycle and then shoot again. So here we go. This is the peak action you're looking for. Actually, this is really cool. You got my dad leaning here looking for a foul. You got this guy here, this guy here, this guy here. So you've got this whole range going for this vertical. He's off in the air. Really cool for a point and shoot. But remember the point and shoots are really good to teach you anticipation. They're really good to figure out what you need to do with your composition and not worry about anything other than getting the image right. And I think that's something that I started off early on with that really, really helped me figure out how to be a better photographer because I didn't know settings yet and it'd be a couple years until I got into high school and started to learn the settings. Right away, I started with composition. So it was just getting the picture in the frame and not worrying about the settings as much as getting that frame proper. And that's what we have here. That's not good. That was too late. Then the flash didn't go off because I didn't reset it. This is fine. Getting the rebound. When the guy's far away from the flash, you got to remember it's like a 10-foot flash. Can't go very far, and this is what happens because the light won't hit the kid from that much of a distance. This kid drove the lane all day, made for really good shots. Boom, horizontals. Here we go. Action coming towards me. My dad... Just more action underneath the basket. Oh, and by the way, yes, this is a scratch in the negative. It's what it looks like. If there's a scratch in the negative coming through the machine, scratches the emulsion and goes throughout the whole thing. So we didn't see that as much back in the day. The rollers used to be cleaner. More rolls went through. When more rolls went through the film machine, they stayed cleaner. Uh, and nowadays, not as many go through. So you pick up a little bit more of the scratching, which uh, maybe it just shows up more because of the uh, digital files, the scans. But... We got this action, boom, under the basket. That's good, too. I mean, these are all good shots. I mean, they're not great. This is what I like. I like seeing this. Uh, and then, was there one more here? with the, the That's nicely exposed for once. And then me, and then me taking the picture of myself. So, really, it's just an interesting experiment to go out there and just point and shoot using the camera. I mean, for, for, for what I wanted to do was go back to where it all started, where I sat on the floor using the same camera, shooting film, and just, just doing it. And you don't lose it. I mean, obviously, you get better with time, but it felt good to be out there shooting with this. And it's a, I love the challenge of using whatever tool I have in my hand to make an image. I just love the creative nature that goes into it. And that's that to me is what it's all about. Going and being creative, whether I'm using a D4 or this Fuji Discovery 1000. It doesn't really matter. It's about capturing a moment, telling a story, and, and just having some fun. So I thank you guys for watching this pretty long video. Hope you enjoyed the whole process from start to finish. It's kind of a five-minute portrait type video uh, for where I started as a photographer. Jared Poland Fro knows photo.com. See ya. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just click the subscribe button right here below the video as YouTube has made the change. And one more thing, click on subscription updates, manage subscriptions. And if you would like to get an email every time I upload a new video, click this box. If you'd like to see it in your feed on YouTube, click that box. And over on fronosphoto.com, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can go ahead and put your name in this box, your email in this box, hit send it, and I will send you a free photo guide, a guide to capturing motion in low light situations. 
If you're new to photography or you're somewhere in the intermediate range looking to learn a little bit more about your camera and how to get out of auto, don't forget about the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide, a guide to getting out of auto. It's at a special price right now. It's a three hour long video. You can buy it as an instant download or as a free as a physical copy with free shipping around the world. So thank you guys very much for watching.